Along with individual experts, Surgeon Masters brings you life improvement strategies in 10 minutes. These proven principles and strategies are easy to learn and can be applied immediately, allowing you to practice your best. Here's your host, Jeff Smith. On this episode of the Surgeon Masters Mini Podcast, I have with me Dr. Peter Gold, a hip and knee arthroplasty surgeon. Peter, I appreciate that you've been doing some things in the wellness space. I know at one of the annual meetings, I saw you in being part of a uh, group sharing some things that are helping other surgeons, I would say, pay attention to themselves and appreciate how they need to take, you know, have their own wellness. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff, for having me. That's really a really great and really important topic. You know, and this may not be exactly what you shared, but what do you think is a critical issue that surgeons should be aware of for their own self? Yeah, I think the more and more I I look into this work and I kind of started off writing a Yellow Journal article on orthopedic surgeon burnout, depression and and suicide. And I was kind of shocked by the numbers to see that, you know, orthopedic surgeons have the highest level of suicide out of out of all surgical subspecialties. And, you know, you look at the numbers for burnout and depression and what the percentages are. And, you know, the more and more I've kind of dived into this this world and dived into this work, I think the biggest thing for me is to, to tell everybody to forget the numbers. Like, there's not this number of like this many percentage of people feel burnt out. I mean, it's just, it's kind of ridiculous that we're even putting numbers on this, right? As surgeons, I think all of us are totally set up for for failure in this role. We have really stressful jobs. We're all perfectionists. We all have very bad self-care habits. Like none of us would be the top of our medical school class, the top of our residency class, getting to good. We would never be where we are if we had good self-care habits. So we're already we're already behind the eight ball there. And we all like quick fixes. We want to see something's wrong. We want to fix it. We want to be done with it. You know, taking care of yourself is not a quick fix. It's not linear. And lastly, pretty much every orthopedic surgeon I've met for the most part is a genuine person who really cares about their job and really cares about their patients. And so I I think it's the recipe for success in one way and being doing what we're doing and having a great career and being connected to purpose, but it's also a recipe for failure. Like all of us are going to be burnt out. All of us are going to have fatigue. It's, It's impossible for who we are as people to not suffer from it. Well, you and I share that same viewpoint that looking at the numbers does seem odd because it almost gives people an out of, oh, then it's not too bad or people saying it's improving. And I'm kind of like, shouldn't this just be categorically across the board? And you've explained very well why that should be the case. What's a a way for the people to start paying attention to this and, and what could they do? Yeah, I think the first thing is just, like you said, to forget the numbers and just accept this as a universal thing, right? It, it's not a bad thing. It's not uh, something to avoid or to be better than. Like it just, it just is, right? We are in stressful jobs, and you know, witnessing the the suffering of other people is going to affect you on a day to day basis. Full stop. So the first thing is just acceptance, and then the second thing is if you can accept that it that this job is going to affect you in a, in an emotional and physical way. If you can accept that, then you have to take on the responsibility of doing the work to get in touch with when it's affecting you, how it's affecting you, and what the things you need to do to help take care of yourself when you realize that it's affecting you. So, you know, for me, it's what I call recognize and routine. There are certain vices that I have that I recognize when I start doing those that I need to get back to my self-care routine. And I, so I think all of us need to kind of just start to develop and do the individual work and self-work to develop the the insight into that and then start to build some some practices into helping repair when when you start to drift off. Well, you're giving a great example of how you've done that for yourself. What did you find as useful things as next steps? What are some habits that would, so you get the warning signal or learn what your warning signals might be, and then you're going to sort of instill some things. And I'm sure that's a huge list or for you, probably a big toolbox. But what's an example of something in your toolbox? I think when you talk about toolboxes and what to do and how to fix things, you know, a lot of the go-to things are mindfulness, do meditation, do yoga, talk to a therapist, talk to a coach. 
these are all kind of checkbox things. And and I check all, I do all those things, right? I meditate, I have a therapist, I have a coach, and I do those things. But I think I think it doesn't have to be as as grandiose as that. I, I think, you know, for people that are listening, you know, just think about the things that bring you joy and bring you happiness in your life. And those can be the routines that you get back to. So for me, like I really enjoy planning out meals and for the week. So going to the grocery store, planning out specific dinners and things I'm going to cook, and then cooking those at night for for me and my family, that brings me joy. So when, when I'm starting to get stressful, I know that, hey, I'm going to plan out some really awesome dinners for the week. I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'm going to find all the things that I that I want. So I think it's simple things like that. You know, if, if you like playing golf, going to, going to hit golf balls. And so it's just finding things that bring you joy and just making sure to reconnect with those things outside of work when times are getting tough. So those are great personal examples. I kind of steered you a little bit in that direction, but even, and you gave examples of others, it sounds like activities that bring you joy, anything else that kind of tap into. Sounds like even at home, like maybe it's also the people you're hanging around with. Yeah, I think, you know, from a 30,000 foot level, it's tapping into activities that you enjoy, connecting to the important relationships that you have in your life, whether professional or or social or familial. And then also, you know, reconnecting to the purpose of, of what we're doing, right? You know, spending extra time with a patient when maybe you wouldn't normally spend that extra time. Doing something with your, you know, subspecialty society or national organizations and doing something just a little bit bigger than yourself or, or outside of, of yourself. Again, all, all those things can just help us slow down and take what is stressing us and kind of help turn stresses into de-stressors. Excellent. So and then many surgeons would say like, it's always stressful, but I think you're highlighting that if you're noticing the extra stress or when things are getting tough, this is a time to recognize that and put some of these activities or connections into play, like put extra effort into that, it sounds like. Yeah, 100%. I think the one interesting thing about stress in our jobs is similar to high performance athletes, they also have stressful jobs, but they also have off seasons where they're off for multiple months at a time and they're, they get stress relief. So I think realizing that our jobs are always stressful and therefore we always need to have avenues for stress relief. And as long as those avenues are, are healthy, then we'll be able to maintain that normal level of stress that we that we all live under. Thanks so much. Mind uh, just kind of recapping and summarizing that for our listeners. As surgeons, whether we like it or not, we are going to be stressed, fatigued, burnt out, whatever you want to call it. So it's time to accept it and figure out a way to take care of yourself. Thanks so much, Peter. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. There you have it. In less than 10 minutes, this is Jeff Smith along with Dr. Peter Gold. Until the next episode of Life Improvement Strategies for the Surgeon Who Wants More. Ciao. Now, take 10 minutes and put your plan into action to practice your best.